All right, then the next game up here is the Bills at or the Dolphins at the Bills here, and this was a close game until the second half when the Dolphins offense couldn't score and the Dolphins defense gave up some big plays right here. This was a close game, three three going into halftime. Defense is both stepping up, not allowing their opposing offenses to really move the ball here, but then. The Dolphins' defense starts to kind of struggle a little bit. They give up a third and 14 in the second um, in the second half in the third quarter. And they were at their own 21-yard line at this point. So you get them out there, but they pick up a third and 14. They allow the Dolphins' defense allows a third and 14. They pick that up, and then they continue on the drive and results into a touchdown. You close it out there. You get the ball back. It's still 3-3. Then the following Bills drive. Once again, I think they give up another big third down. Uh, another third and 13. This time it's at Miami's 33-yard line. So if they don't if they don't pick up the first down, they probably still get a field goal. So now it's only three to six. Uh, but once again, the defense gives it up, and it would have been uh, three to six. And then the Dolphins score a touchdown, making it 11 to six. And then the Bills score a field goal on the next drive. Once again, just able to keep it close, but the Dolphins defense flounders in big situations. And this Dolphins offense is just not ready to compete folks. This is not a good offense folks. These offensive coordinators for the Dolphins are absolutely not good. It's funny because Tua finally starts going. I mean, they always score on kind of, or they always move the ball on their first drive and kind of their last drives of the game and what's difference there what's the difference there they let Tua air it out I mean look at this uh, t on the first drive folks Tua on 39 picks up 23 yards then we are getting Tua keep on passing the ball here third and three seven yard pass letting Tua be aggressive an eight yard pass uh, Tua trying to go deep trying to uh, throw the ball deep here on the first drive and that's why they're able to move the ball because they allow Tua to move the ball deep and then also at when they're down two possessions they let Tua move the ball deep and they're able to move the ball and put up points and touchdowns and all that but then when the game is close they clam up and everything is so shallow and everything is just dinking and dunking and two is coming out and saying hey I just passed where they tell me to pass so that's not you know, giving him any freedom to kind of push the ball down the field so this is not a good offensive team overall this is what happens when you have defensive minded head coaches folks they lose sight of the offense they only focus on the defense and they think their defense Defense is so good that they can just have a mediocre offense to work with. And this off these offensive coordinators for the Dolphins do not know how to call plays, folks. It is still, once again, not on two. I am not going to put it on two. I will not put it on two, folks. It is not what I'm seeing. And I was watching this game. I've got so many plays already queued up for our Wednesday film study to watch Tua. I mean, the man's accuracy is absolutely off the charts, folks. Um, we believe he has a big arm. We think the offensive coordinators are just holding him back for some reason. Uh, that was That's like the only question mark remaining. I don't think it's a true question mark, but we are not really seeing it because they're really not giving him the ability to move the ball deep. So our last kind of real remaining question mark on Tua is, does he have a weak or a big arm? We just don't know because the offense is not putting him in the situations where we can consistently see him move the ball 15 yards, 20 plus yards, having the deep balls, the 15 50-yard deep bomb shots over and over again a couple of times in the game. We just don't get to see those. So I guess if we have any question marks on Tua, it's his arm strength. We But uh, his coordinators are not letting him test it, so we just don't know. Um, all right, so Tua goes 21 of 39. 21 of 39, we get 53% completion percentage, really not the greatest uh, this game. 205 yards, no touchdown, one interception. The interception came at the end of the game. It's not one of the boneheaded uh, errors that Tua makes of just trying to kind of keep the play alive or the uh, receivers not doing him justice here. They were down two possessions with two minutes and two and a half minutes left, and they just tried to take a shot on third and 26. And uh, this is where potentially we get a little bit of the arm strength coming back because uh, 
because when we watch this play right here, we've got the interception queued up. This is a real not great to look here, arm strength wise here by Tua. I mean, he's going to throw this from his 10 yard line, and this is just a little bit of a duck about 20 yards, 25 yards down the field. It's on third and 26, and the defense of the Bills are just playing up um, because the Dolphins had not stretched the field vertically the entire game. So, arm strength is still a little bit of a question mark, but it's not an official real question mark. It's a little faded question mark. Um, so that's what Tua did uh, yesterday. Miles Gaskin, 12 carries for 36 yards. Salvin Ahmed, 7 carries for 22 yards. Nothing great. The offensive line is not great here by the Dolphins either. All right, Devontae Parker finally back in the leading receiver. So once again, great job by Tua to go to his weapons when they're finally available. Devontae Parker, eight receptions for 85 yards, and he was catching everything that Tua was putting right on the money. So I give big credit to Devontae Parker this game of being reliable and consistent. Finally, his first game back. I give that man a lot of credit. Mike Kosicki, always reliable, and Tua always goes to him because he's reliable. Four, three receptions for 48 yards. Jalen Waddle, four receptions, 29 yards. He was targeted 12. 12 times, folks. Yikes. And then Miles Gaskin, three catches for 19 yards. So this offense is not, it's not inventive. It's not creative. It's so passive and it's not good, folks. And then we had Austin Ritter fumble the ball and lose it. Uh, what do they do off of that fumble? Um, off of the fumble, the Bills... Uh, it was the end of half, so the Dolphins were trying to score. They were at the Bills' 12-yard line, guaranteed some points, and they fumbled the ball. So once again, it's just everybody besides Tua, folks, classic. And then for the Bills, all right, took a, took a little bit slow start here, but then they kind of got it clicking. And, I mean, I love what this offense is doing here in the second half, rushing with Josh Allen and moving him in space and all that. Josh Allen as a running quarterback is real good, folks. Kind of a Patrick Mahomes-esque, really. Where it's not like the it's not a defining uh, part of his game, but when they really utilize it, man, oh man, and they scheme it, folks. It's not like Josh Allen's like, all right, nothing's open, I'm gonna keep it and run it. They're scheming Josh Allen running, and it's looking real gosh dang good, folks. I think we're gonna watch that on Wednesday's film study, um, just to really show it because if they can get this mixed in, like give Josh Allen maybe ten individual carries a game where they're schemed for it this could be really something special for Buffalo so watch Josh Allen on the rushing uh, but he goes 29 of 42 29 of 42 69% completion percentage, real good. 249 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. He was the leading rusher, eight carries for a 55 yards and a touchdown. Looking real good, folks. It was looking real great. If you didn't watch this game, I highly suggest to watch all eight plays of Josh Allen rushing. It's good. It's good. It's real gosh dang good. I can't wait till Wednesday. We'll watch it on Wednesday, folks. So wait till Wednesday. Watch it on your own. Whatever it is, we'll break it again down on Wednesday. I can't. Oh, I can't wait till Wednesday now. Woof. Um, all right. Cole Beasley, 10 receptions for 110 yards. He came up clutch after clutch, picking up some big third downs and all that. Stephon Diggs, only five catches for 40 yards. He scored a touchdown. Zach Moss, six catches for 39 yards. Tommy Sweeney, three catches, 30 yards. Gabriel Davis, four catches, 29 yards, and a touchdown. So overall, really great game by this Bills in the second half, uh, but they stayed in it in the first half and took advantage in the second half. So the Bills get the win 26-11, to 11, folks.